What's up guys? This is Nick at Stradwise.com and I am very delighted and happy and honored to have Michael Christie from the Iron Snail uh, joining me. Michael is a, a videographer and a comedian too, right? Yeah, thanks. yeah. Yeah. In New York City and he has he has my favorite channel about denim on, on YouTube. Whoa! Yeah. Okay. So we're gonna talk about the biggest raw denim mistakes to avoid. Yes. We are, we are both dudes with extensive denim collections. Yep. Uh, and uh, yeah, we thought this would be a, a fun one to do to do a video on and I could get, get, his, get his perspective. Yep, I agree. agree. All right. Let's do it. So yeah. Oh, I, I wanna say thanks to uh, Grant Skildhouse uh, for his help with uh, this, this script. He wrote an article about this on my website. Um, which I put in the description below. And also he runs the Arcuate.com, um, which is like another denim blog. So you guys are gonna just be overwhelmed with denim, denim. denim media and denim resources for this. All right, number one. Number one, baby. You'll probably see, you, actually you've probably done this too. When you first start off getting raw denim, you always go too small. Size too small, two sizes too small. And you think, well, it'll stretch out to fit me perfectly. That is true to a degree, but it's also more like it will stretch out to accommodate you and not fit you perfectly. You yeah, yeah. It's it's there's like three areas you have to think about when you have when you're getting raw denim, right? Because like the one is the fact that the size that you think is your size is not your size. True. Like that, it's called vanity sizing. I was quite positive I was like a size 32 inch waist. Uh, that's what all my jeans used to be. But then when I started getting raw denim and and salvage denim. I had to get myself, you know, I had to actually measure my waist with the tape and I rudely found out that I'm like a solid 34 and everyone had been lying to me my entire pants buying life. That is actually a very interesting thing about modern fashion <laughs> is it, it is made to be like, oh, okay, I'm still a size 29 <laughs> and then you get raw Japanese denim or just, you know, raw US denim and it's not true. Yeah. And then there's, there's another part of the of the whole thing. So for one, you know, you're, you're probably bigger than you are, and you got jeans that are that are too small, right? Yeah. Then there's the idea that your people will still tell you to get jeans that feel too small anyway. Yes. Because they they they, they stretch, or right. they're supposed to stretch. Exactly. But how much they stretch is based on kind of a few factors, including like the the looseness of the weave. Yep. So for instance, there's a pair of summer jeans that I wanted to get before my upcoming trip to Australia. And, but it's so stressful because they're getting shipped from Spain and also I have to, I'm, I, I'm, not, I'm never 100% sure if they're using 100% accurate measurements. Right. And then they tell me that they'll stretch more than the average pair of jeans. Mm -hmm. And I don't know how much that's gonna be. Right. And the whole thing is, is stressful. So number, the, number one, this is like the subcategory of mm -hmm. the fit section. Number one, you have to measure yourself and find out that you're not your, your actual size. Number two yeah. is the jeans will stretch. And then number three, if we're talking about raw unsanitized denim, is that those jeans shrink. Yes, so if they're unsanitized denim, the whole point is that you are expected to go into a hot bath either in them or just with them, and they will shrink like 10-ish percent. But usually a site will say, this is what size they are before wash, this is what size they are after wash, but keep that into consideration, always. Yeah, my, my very first pet a lot of denim out there is not actually raw. It's like it's like salvage or it's like one wash or whatever. Yep. And and it's it's fine either way. Like it's not like it's worse if it's if it's raw. If it's less processed if it's raw. And the old slogan for Levi's was shrink to fit because these were jeans that uh you after that first wash, that's when they actually shrink. Yep. Um so my first pair were a pair of Studio Dartisan, which are, I don't know, they're around here somewhere. Somewhere, yeah. They're around here somewhere. And uh this is my, my total introduction into the world of salvage Japanese denim. I went to Self Edge in the East Village. I got these jeans uh, and I had to listen to a whole lecture about like, you gotta take them home. Mm -hmm. You have to fill a garbage bag full of water if you don't have a yeah. bathtub, which I didn't because it's New York City. So I'd right. fill this garbage bag full of hot water and then put the jeans in there mm -hmm. for like an hour and then take them out and let them dry, but in the shade and out of the sun yeah, and not course. in the drying of machine. Course and then put them on my body and then maybe have to shrink them again. And if they're wet, if you walk in them, you'll get knee bags. So don't do that either, let them dry. Yeah. So that's that's three, that's one thing, it's the sizing. Yes. That's the first thing you have to, the mistakes that people make with uh, raw denim. Mm -hmm. uh, number two. Number, number two was uh, buying into the hype. Yes. Like, like getting it in your head that you have to try as many denim brands as possible. Well, the thing is that raw denim especially, there is typical, tightly woven, non-irregular denim, like Levi's, for example, standard mall Levi's you always get. Those are pretty much the same. 
but when you get into raw denim, there are a ton of different things. All these things that make you want a different pair of jeans. Oh yeah, like, yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. There's always a shiny new, but actually extremely old and vintage and heritage exactly. thing that's catching your eye. Yeah, you might want something slubby. Yep. You might want something that's like Hank dyed, you might want something that's uh, Izome dyed. You might want... Uh, you might want all of those things yeah. on different pairs, which leads you to having like 20 to 30 pairs of jeans. Yeah. Um, one problem with that is that you're never going to wear them enough to get the fades that people typically 100%, want. 100%, yep. And the second thing is that, like, probably most of them don't fit you that well. <laughs> True. <laughs> yeah. So that's, that's number two, right? So mm -hmm. it's, it's just it's manically buying as many brands as you can yes. because you just want to experience this whole world of denim. A commendable uh, attitude, but one that will likely lead you to having a lot of jeans that uh, barely get worn and don't fit you that well. The third mistake... Mm -hmm. Uh, well, the third mistake would, would, would be like the opposite of the second one, which would be like becoming like a, a slave to one brand. Yeah, I right, think. right. Yeah. Just um, getting super loyal to one brand, being like, that's my brand no matter what. Just because that's, that's kind of the easy way to start off with, like if you find a favorite brand, then all of a sudden you close off, you look at what they have, and you don't know if maybe another brand changes how they do a certain thing that you really like. Another brand's straight tapered fit, that doesn't make sense. Another brand's tapered fit, is a little less extreme than a different brands, or they do their denim differently. There's all this stuff that you miss out on. Yeah, like it is, well, I'm gonna need to contradict ourselves too much, but like it is worth exploring the world of denim. You don't wanna be like, you know, prevented yeah. from exploring uh, a different brand. You don't wanna do it like maniacally and just getting as many as you can. Like I've gotta have like the, what are they called, the Osaka 5 or, or anything like that? Yeah, yeah. But at the same time, like for me, Pure Blue Japan and Oni and Tanuki mm -hmm. are my three favorites. I've tried a lot okay, of yeah, yeah. brands. I've tried more because I'm very guilty of the second mistake on this list of going to Yeah, my... same. But I also haven't just zeroed in on one brand. It's those three brands I've decided uh, are the ones. They've got like the fits that work best for me and an interesting range of denim. Th those those three are my, are my favorite that I've learned from breaking the second rule and the third rule. Those are some banger favorites though. Those are some of the best. <laughs> they just have the thickest thighs, they fit me the best. That's a tough thing to admit. Or, or that your pants don't fit. Like one day I saw a picture of myself in pants that literally were like suctioned to my legs and I was like, they don't fit. And they're all faded, so I was like, oh, I gotta start again. I just like it when the jeans roughly follow the shape of my body, and that results in got it, more tight got fits. But got it. So you like your body. I don't like my body. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, if the jeans look different than me, that's actually incredible. <laughs> yeah. You're about throwing people off this scent. Yeah. So number four is denim care. That's the, another mistake. The, probably the most controversial thing in denim. Yes. Is how to take care of the simplest, most rugged pair of clothing that exists. It's so controversial. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And what we would consider mistakes wouldn't be someone else's mistakes. Right. But this is like a, the thing that get people get the most excited about is their fades. Of course, of course. And the fades are something that is produced, I mean, Selvage down tends to be thicker and uh, tends to uh, be also like a bit more durable and it also tends to be dyed in ways that make it uh, able to produce interesting fades, mm -hmm. but in the search, in the pursuit of these fades, yes, people will do anything, anything, and by anything that includes not wash their jeans for two years, yeah. which a lot of people do. Yeah. Two years, often daily wear. Who would do that? A lot of them. Right. I've encountered a lot of people that would do that. So. Yeah. Tell me about raw denim care. I Tell will. the people what they should know so that they don't. People listen up. This is totally subjective, so if you're gonna click off, don't. But here's usually, here's my philosophy with raw denim, and just denim in general. And it's pretty simple, but wash them when they are dirty. And you will know when they are dirty for a few different reasons. The main reason is though, you will see the actual texture of your jeans change. Do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. They'll be a little bit more slick, and they'll, they'll have like a little oily sheen to them. <laughs> as gross as that sounds, it is true. But. Really, all you want to do, cold wash, unless they're way too big and you want to take a risk of shrinking them, then warm or hot, but cold wash, let them line dry, don't go crazy. Wash them, a lot of people do natural detergent, or even, if they're very extreme, they hand wash them. I don't usually hand wash just because I'm like, I think it'll be interesting what comes out of the washing machine, but typically, that's what you can do. But the biggest and the only advice I ever have, I forget where I read it, but basically they were interviewing someone, some prestigious denim maker, and they said like, why are you even asking that question? Wash your jeans when they need to be washed. Yeah, I'm a strong proponent of just, just 
just wash, just wash your jeans. Right. Just wash your here, here is an uncontroversial statement. No, of course it's controversial. Yeah. You are Mr. Controversy. Yeah, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm a real, I'm a loose cannon. <laughs> when it's, so once you've decided it's time to wash your jeans, I won't say when you have to wash it. Once you decide you need to wash your jeans, mm -hmm. at the bare minimum, turn your jeans inside out, mm -hmm. put them in your washer with cold water. Mm -hmm. Don't put anything else in the same load, mm -hmm. and like, except for other jeans, yep. because the dye will bleed. Yep. And then line dry it in the shade. Yes as opposed to in your dryer or out in the sun. And and I, oh, sorry, good. Yeah, no, that, that, that's it. And, and I just use regular detergent. Like, I don't Yeah, it's, the reason people don't want to wash their jeans, in case you don't know, is if you don't wash them, you get sharper, more contrasting fades, like where there's actual whiskers or where there's like little folds in your jeans when you're wearing them, those will fade a lot sharper. If you wash them all the time, it's a pretty uniform, your jeans will get lighter. That's why people don't usually, or why people freak out all the time. Yeah, that's true. So it's tough. Will the fades look nicer if you wash them literally not once in a whole year? Yes. Will people probably not want to hang around you and your musty old jeans? Uh, it's a higher likelihood. Don't let your jeans, um, this is my personal rule, don't let, when they're actually fading in the cores of the denim or the cotton is coming out and it's turning white, don't let those go yellow. I see so many people, raw denim people, let them go yellow. I don't like that look. That I'm like, that's those are dirty jeans. And this is coming from someone that loves denim. If I see someone on the street in raw denim that's all ripped up and has that oily look and is yellow, I'm like, yuck. Those are <laughs> gross. Uh, the fifth mistake to avoid, uh, I would say it's it's like not staying the course yes. with your denim. Mm -hmm. Like I think it's it's a slow process, right? And the fades are very much like uh, it's your personal someone what does someone say? The, your personal, personal narrative. Narrative. Yeah, yeah the yeah, fades yeah. are like it's it's where you become your genes, your genes become you and it's like a beautiful process yeah. of, of art and, and love and have you seen that but I think it's on Reddit and it's it's like a green text post. This guy is saying he like he has his raw denim jeans, it's raining, so he thinks I won't wear them today. And he gets hit by a car and he's like <laughs> Oh, that would have looked so cool on my jeans. <laughs> Stay the course. You never know when you'll get hit by a car. The point we're trying to make is that uh, I think there are plenty of people, will, like fading is a long process. Yep. And there are people, will, they'll decide their jeans aren't fading fast enough. Mm -hmm. And so they'll like go buy another pair. They're like, oh, I picked the wrong pair to fade. Yeah. Or they'll buy so many jeans that like none of them fade all that much. Yeah, which, is, right. which I'm completely guilty of. Because when well, you look at raw denim and you see the fade examples and you're like, wow, that's what I want. But then you rotate between 10 pairs of jeans and you just never get it. Yeah, so have patience. This is, yeah, the mistake to avoid is impatience for this one. So yes. have patience, put a good amount of wear into your jeans mm -hmm. and uh, don't make our mistakes. Well, my mistake of and having like yeah. dozens and dozens of pairs of jeans mm -hmm. and so they never get that pretty. I've got a few nice pairs, but there's a there's like more than one that just won't reach its true destiny of fading right. beautifully. And a, a because big of hubris. Because, <laughs> yeah. Well, today I'll be wearing these, I can't. <laughs> Something to, like keep in mind too is that as you wear your jeans longer and longer, the fit gets better. Because raw denim is very stiff, so it kind of holds its shape. So it'll look like, if you see someone, I could spot someone that hasn't washed their jeans from a mile away, because they're raw. And they kind of like, the honeycombs on the legs, they stay there. Yeah. And they don't drape. As you wear your jeans more and more, they will get softer and drape and fit better and look better and have a very specific worn in, this fabric is now soft so everything follows better look which is very important, but does take a lot of work to get there. Mm. But that's why it's like a great uh, jumping off point for life lessons. Yes. The patience you learn in the raw denim hobby will yeah. make you a great person. That's really how I learned everything. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> the jeans person. told me more than my dad ever did. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right. And the last one, for pairs. If you followed all of these steps and actually wore a pair of jeans <laughs> and totally destroyed them, <laughs> this is the most important one. Yeah. Repairs, repair, repairs your jeans, right? Yeah. It's a hard one. It's an interesting one and it's the coolest one because I think that is when a pair of jeans can get really cool if you repair them properly. But the tough part is when jeans are getting to that point where they're ripping, besides the crotch, because the crotch always, it's it always, always the crotch. It's always gonna blow out. Yeah. But when you get to a point where just the knees on your jeans are ripping or if you keep your phone in your front pocket, that's ripping. A lot of people typically will be like, no, oh, these jeans are dumb. That is a thing, of course, but you could send them off to somewhere like Indigo Proof, who I really want to do a video with. She is the most amazing denim repair person I have ever seen. You could literally have a pair of pants blown out, like just for some reason the leg is gone, and she will darn it to look perfectly new. Can you explain what darning is? 
kind of. This is this is I would that's the go-to way for fixing salvage denim typically, right? Tip well, darning you can have a lot lower profile repair, and what is happening is basically say you have a hole in your jeans. You put the denim there, and you are running a ton of thread back and forth very densely over itself again and again and again to basically fix that pair and reweave that look in. What you could also do, which is a little bit more aesthetically louder, so I'm kind of drawn to it, is you can patch your jeans, which is you take a piece of denim, slap it on the back, and you stitch it around to fix that hole. And with that, or separate of that, you can repair your jeans through Sashiko. That's not the story. Sashiko's amazing. Basically, you are, think about like your denim's here. When you're stitching through it, you're adding a little top layer of protection so that denim doesn't rip or anything like that. If you're gonna repair your jeans, uh, do it. Do it. <laughs> you, don't, you don't need to throw them out. Don't uh, actually and, throw them but out. But also make sure it's with a qualified uh, denim -y person who yes. knows what they're doing and has experience with salvage. Check out Indigo Proof. Denim and all this is such a deep art form that there are people that can repair your jeans to literally look like nothing has ever happened. Like, it's insane. Yeah, so especially if you're spending, you know, 300 bucks on a pair of jeans, go the extra mile and spend a zillion dollars getting it repaired by someone who knows what they're doing and exactly. we'll make your jeans immortal. And it makes your jeans look way cooler. All right, well, thanks for coming and hanging out. Thanks for having me. We're about to go by Mike, his first pair of Red Wing boots. Yes. Very exciting. Make sure yes. you watch it over on his channel. Subscribe to him below uh, and uh, subscribe here as well if you just went up here because uh, this is a channel all about uh, nice men's boots and uh, heritage fashion and quality casual menswear. The wisest it's, it's strider from Australia. That's it. Yep. All right, peace. <laughs> How was that? You like that? Yeah. Okay, cool.